Um, hello everybody, um, my name is Sharon Duffy and I'm just going to talk you through what I've been up to since I graduated. Um, so I graduated from GMIT in November 2014 um, in medical science and as part of the medical science degree, as you all know, there's the research project in fourth year. So I was fortunate enough to be able to do my project here in Galway, or in GMIT, in the Galway Medical Technology Centre, or GMedTech for short, and it's actually located here at GMIT, I didn't even know it existed. Um, so just briefly to explain what the project was about, um, we were involved in making blood clots from sheep, or from bovine blood, and then we developed a histological protocol to analyse them blood clots. Um, but I found that the research project was one of the most valuable aspects of fourth year because it just gave, it really developed my research skills and it also allows you to make that link with industry or a hospital. Um, <coughs> and also the research project was extremely important in where I am now in my career and I'll go through that later. Um, as part of the project, I was lucky to be able to present it at the LabCon conference um, that the Academy, Medical Science Academy um, organises. And then I went on and I represented Ireland in Croatia at the EPBS conference as well. Um, so after college then, I was lucky then to start straight away working in a hospital laboratory in Mullingar, so in the Midlands Regional Hospital in Mullingar. Um, so I worked in blood transfusion there for nine months and I just want to highlight that I worked in blood transfusion but as part of my fourth year I studied biochemistry and microbiology so I know some people might be worried that oh if I studied hematology or cell path does that mean I can work, only work in hematology and cell path? No it doesn't, it doesn't limit you at all in what laboratory you can go working in and also that was my placement hospital as well so kind of just keep that in mind that a lot of placement hospitals do tend to take their students back again. And I did work there as a lab aide during third and fourth year as well. Um, so just to go on now to what I'm doing at the moment. Um, <clears throat> while I was doing my research project here in Galway, a medical device company called Neuravi, um, they're located here in Galway, they approached my supervisor at the time um, and basically they just asked my supervisor, did he know of a suitable candidate to undertake a PhD with the company? Um, <clears throat> so he suggested that I apply to the Irish Research Council for funding for a PhD and I got the funding. So <clears throat> the PhD, I suppose it was all good timing. If it wasn't, if I didn't do my project here in Galway, I probably wouldn't be doing the PhD. Um, <clears throat> so, and it is a continuation as well of my final year project. Um, it's an Irish research employment based PhD, so it's an employment based in that I'm working with Neuravi and it's co funded by the Irish Research Council and Neuravi. Um, and it's a three year PhD, so I'm halfway through it now and I've another year and a half to go, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, it's as I said, it's co-funded by Neurobi. Just to give a little bit of a background on what they do, um, they're a medical device company that make thrombectomy devices. And unfortunately, don't have any fancy videos to show how it works. But um, basically, a thrombectomy device is a device that's inserted into a, a stroke patient, into the brain of a patient when they have a stroke, and it's used to remove the clot. So it's a very thin wire that basically goes up through an artery in your leg and the doctor guides it up through the artery into your brain and basically they catch the clot and bring it back out. Um, so that's just it in simple terms. Um, <coughs> I just want to go through what my role as a PhD student is in the company. Because um, I know again it's kind of rare for someone to go into industry or to be involved with industry. but. As part of the PhD, we developed um, a range of blood clots that have a range of compositions and they're intended to represent those that are retrieved from stroke patients. So basically that involved me having to go to the literature, see, look at any work that has been done on 
classrooms and stroke patients and then trying to replicate the clots ourselves. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the point in having all these lovely clots? Like, what's the point in having them? So basically, the company is using these range of blood clots to test their devices and they're developing new devices, trying to improve their device. So in order to test their device, they need clots. Um, the clots are also used when, for hands-on training with the neurointerventional surgeons who perform the trombectomy procedure. So in order for them to basically get trained up, they're not go, going to go straight in and do the procedure on a patient without being trained up. Um, and then they're also being used in a number of stroke centres throughout the world. Um, a number of different centres are doing imaging studies to see can you predict the composition of the clot from a CT or an MRI scan prior to performing the procedure. So that's like a really useful information if you can tell before um, performing the procedure if the clot, for example, is a friable clot full of red cells. Well, then they know then that clot is likely to break up and may cause another reocclusion later on, maybe within a couple of days. Or they might know maybe it's a fibrin-rich clot, which will more than likely be extremely difficult to remove. <coughs> so they may have to choose a particular device, particular competitor's device over another device. And we are also hoping to, um, I know some people think this is a bit disgusting, but we're hoping to keep the clots that are removed from stroke patients. So once it's removed, we're hoping to basically keep them and perform some studies and testing on them. <coughs> so Beaumont Hospital at the moment is the only hospital in Ireland, or in the Republic of Ireland, that performs the procedure. So we have a number of collaborations in place with them <coughs> to hopefully collect the clot, and well, from hundreds of patients, and collect data regarding the case. So we'd be looking to collect data such as if the patient had any underlying disease such as atrial fibrillation or if they were smoking or something that may have contributed to causing the stroke. Um, the number of attempts made to remove the clot. Um, what other information? The number of pieces that the clot is in, like is it intact as one whole clot or is it has it fragmented into five or six different pieces? <clears throat> so then we hopefully then will do after maybe a year once all the clots are collected we'll do studies and hopefully be able to do a correlation study and I'll emphasize if anyone here is interested in going on to do research you'd be very used to doing ethics proposals for a bit of a pain but you have to do them um, yeah so just to go through how um, doing the PhD in correlation with an industry is what advantages basically there has been. So it has given me the opportunity to present both nationally and then internationally in hopefully next in a couple of months or in the year to come. But um, it has also given me that industrial experience. So I've gained my hospital experience <coughs> through placement and <coughs> working in Mullingar. But I never knew what it was like to work in industry. Like I was always focused like on going to hospital, that's it. Um, but it was, it's nice to actually see what it's like in industry, to see how their processes work and all that. So I do spend quite a lot of my time there. I spend about 70% of my time in the company and maybe the remainder of the time here in GMIT. So I know a lot of people are mad to get out of college after fourth year. Um, <coughs> I was kind of like that as well, but you know, I'm still continuing my education, but not in college the whole time. Um, another thing I found doing a PhD in collaboration with a company was that the amount of collaborations that it has opened up. Um, like we're currently collaboration with Beaumont Hospital as I mentioned, but also the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and the UCLA Stroke Center in Los Angeles. And to be honest, if I was probably doing the PhD on my own, I probably wouldn't have made them collaborations. Like com the company has so many links, like. I definitely wouldn't have in collaboration with all three of them. Um, <coughs> and finally, it has given me a chance to publish the work as well. So I suppose that's another kind of good thing to have on the CV or whatever. Um, now, just to give you some advice, 
Um, we hope it's good advice. Um, <coughs> yeah, the first thing I'd say, I don't know if anyone here is actually a member of the <coughs> academy, the, the ACSLM. Um, I would encourage you to all just join up. It is free to students, so you've nothing to lose. Literally just two minutes fill out a form, and that's it. Um, and I would encourage you as well to take part in the CPD cycle, the Continuous Professional <coughs> Development. So basically, it's another thing to put down your CV. It shows that you're interested in the profession or whatever. So it invo might involve maybe, well, you get points for just becoming a member anyway, and you get points for graduating. So you have loads of points there already. But you get other points for like just doing a short little quiz, reading a journal article and doing a quiz at the end of that. Just little tasks like that that might only take five, ten minutes. Um, and it's another good thing to put down your CV. If you're going to look for a job in a hospital, you can say you're taking part in the CPD cycle. <coughs> and also, um, <coughs> I don't know if you're told or not, but I think in the next couple of months, the, it's going to be mandatory for all medical scientists, well, people working in a hospital, practicing medical scientists, to have core registration. Um, and one thing that's mandatory for core registration is that you're actually taking part in the CPD cycle. So if you start now, give yourself a little bit of a head start. Um, yeah, and I would also just advise you maybe to attend any conferences or talks that are out there to just stay up to date with what's going on in the profession, basically. The Academy, again, are great. They hold loads of meetings. Like They even hold meetings relevant to students. Um, like meetings <coughs> telling you what options you have out there as a medical scientist and they hold meetings on how to actually use the CPD cycle because a lot of people go onto the website and they haven't a clue how to use it so they just say to hell with this I'm not going to bother with it um, yeah and then there's conferences like LabCon and Biomedica they're two great conferences to go to you meet <coughs> um, a lot of in a lot of the industries do go to them conferences like Abbott's Beckman Coulter, AccuScience, people like them. And if you're interested in getting into the industrial side of things, Biomedica would be a very good conference to go to and maybe bring your CV along and to give it to them. Um, what else? Yeah, <coughs> another thing just is probably isn't um, going to help the fourth years, but for them. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, this is the first, second, third years. When you do go on placement, I would advise you just to be as willing and as helpful and an enthusiastic as possible, because a lot, as I said, a lot of people do get their first employment in their placement hospital, and the field of medical scientists, science, it's so small in that everyone knows everyone. Like all the medical scientists know each other. Like me myself, I probably know someone in the majority of the hospitals throughout Ireland and like a lab manager <coughs> probably knows the lab manager in every hospital and if you're going for a job all they have to do is just lift up the phone and ask what were they like on placement um, oh yes and this probably does refer to the fourth years um, <coughs> I know fourth years is very stressful and all that and you're thinking about passing the year and studying and all that but I would advise you, <coughs> maybe towards the end of fourth year, to just start looking at what jobs are out there and maybe start applying for a few jobs come the end of fourth year. Because um, <coughs> when you finish that in May, you don't want to be sitting there with no job. Um, but then people are often stuck, well, where do I go to look for these jobs? The Academy website actually do um, display a lot of the jobs. So that's another reason why to join um, and you have to be a member in order to log in and view what jobs are available. And also the HSE website, they <coughs> advertise jobs as well. And there's agencies, I think a lot of hospitals might be trying to get rid of agency work. I don't know if there's many agency staff now, but the two main agencies I think are the CPL agency and TTM, depending on what hospital. Um, but I don't know how relevant that is now. Um, yeah, finally then, um, don't be afraid to continue your education. I know a lot of people just want to get straight out of college into a hospital, 
and that's it. Um, that was a bit like me, and things just fell into place. I didn't think I'd be here, like to be honest. Um, so you have loads of options. You can go and do a master's. As we said earlier, there are loads of masters out there, but if you're thinking of going into a hospital um, and looking for maybe a promotional position later on down the line in years to come, there are specific masters that the academy do accredit in order to get fellowship. But then there, if there are still there's loads like people just think right, Coleraine or DIT and do the medical science masters there. There are other options as well, so don't limit yourself. And then if you want to go um, for your sins and go and do a PhD, um, there are a number of funding bodies out there. I know people mightn't be aware, well, if you want to do a PhD, how do I go about it? Um, there are loads of funding bodies. Mine is the Irish Research Council, but there's also the European Research Council. Um, Science Foundation Ireland is a good one as well. Um, they have a lot of PhD positions in NUI. I know I shouldn't be promoting NUI, it's supposed to be GMIT, but uh, um, the Health Research Research Board as well is another one, um, Enterprise Ireland, <coughs> and also Chagas. Um, they're not just for farmers. Um, <laughs> they do have some, I think, a lot of microbiology based PhDs in that. I think you just keep an eye on them sort of websites or whatever. <coughs> so I hope that advice, advice does help you somewhere along the line. Uh, yeah, so that's everything. If anyone wants any information, I've left my email address there, but you don't have to email me if you don't want to. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, if you have any questions, I'll answer them. Later. <laughs>